Hello everyone, Squid DK here. Time for another narration. This time we're going to fly the uh, AJS-37 Vegan, made by Heat Blur Simulations. To get the engine started, we turn on the battery, then the inverter, followed by the generator. Then on the throttle, we turn on the low pressure pump. We hit the starter switch, and push the throttle a little bit forward to engage the high pressure pump. This will allow the engine to receive fuel and, and turn on. We close the canopy, listening to the sound that reminds us of our wallets every time the simulation industry comes with a new product for us to enjoy. Heatblur did an amazing job with the sounds of this product. Uh, just listen to the spool above the engine. Okay, we also have our external lights turned on, so we're a bit easier to see for the friendly guys here. Okay, let's set up the aircraft. We start by looking at the uh, CK-37, or please allow me to murder the Swedish language. As I'm a Dane, I can do that, you know. Central Calculator 37. We switch input-output to input mode, and change the selector to Ref Lola. Inputting the code 9099 on the keyboard, followed by the selection key SKU on the waypoint selection, that will load the data from the mission cartridge into the computer. With the cartridge loaded, we switch the selector to TACT and hit 9 on the keyboard, followed by B2 uh, to switch to Brytpunkt 2. That will change Brytpunkt 2 to a mission point. Finally, we change the takeoff direction to the alternate by hitting LS SKU while in Barna Grens, followed by switching the selector back to output and going to ACT POS. Let's enjoy the taxi out to the runway, taking in the niceness of the day. Stores carried for this mission includes the centerline fuel tank and four rocket pods. Each rocket pod carries six rockets of 135 millimeters in diameter. These rockets are all fired in one salvo.
Okay, let's talk a little bit about the AJS-37. The AJS stands for Attack, Jagd, Spawning. Uh, that basically means attack, fighter and reconnaissance. This doesn't mean that the AJS is equally well suited for all three purposes. It is a very good attack aircraft attacking known positions or previously reconnaissance uh, areas. It is also very well suited for surface attack, which is basically just a fancy way of saying anti-ship strikes. Fighter is not really the forte of, of this version of the Wigan. You have the Jagdwigen for that or the JA-37. This leaves the reconnaissance part of the equation. And on the AJS-37 that's a little bit different than what most people expect of a reconnaissance aircraft. You don't get the fancy cameras or the sideways looking radars or the synthetic aperture radars on this thing. You get a fairly decent surface search radar and you have a competent radar warning system. It is built for the maritime reconnaissance rule where you can map out ships movements thus coordinating a strike of other AJSs. This is a fairly clever system for a country with limited resources. A vegan in a strike role is optimized to conduct one hard-hitting attack. You do not linger, you don't cruise around the area looking for the targets. You deliver your entire payload in one strike and then get the hell out of dodge. For this a normal flight pan is, is done at very low altitude at high speeds. Uh, I have read reports from British Jaguar crews being very impressed by the Swedish pilots conducting their low level flying. I have also seen images of ground crew picking out fur needles from the uh, wing actuators on vegans after sorties. A brief note on the head-up display symbology and the implementation. The vegan was one of the first aircraft that carried a head-up display. In the display, instead of what we're used to today, where you have a heading tape and a pitch ladder and altitude and airspeed and angle of attack, G meter, waypoint info, you basically have most of these things in symbology. The one big exception is the airspeed that is read on the instrument panel. But you have a clever way of showing your way of altitude and, and your aircraft's attitude. And this is done so you do not overload the pilots with figures and uh, numbers. You have some simple, very easy to read uh, symbols and they are accessible to the way the pilot needs it. You can also declutter the head-up display so that when you're flying really low you don't have anything to distract you from your flying. Some like it, some don't. I think it's kind of neat and it gives me all the information I need when I do my flying. I now have something indicating on my radar warning receiver. It is a search radar and it's probably not a real threat because I know there are two Nanushka class missile corvettes out in the sea. These are them. They don't pose a significant threat due to only carrying guns as air defense. They could be a target on a follow on mission. Oh, what are those power lines doing there?
popping up now to get a good area view. I'm looking for my target that is an SA9 Gaskin vehicle. It's situated on this derelict airfield up ahead. That's it right there. The philosophy in this attack is that I pop up, place the pepper on the vehicle, wait till I'm in range, pull the trigger and just get the hell out of there. I'm not going to stay and look at the result, I'm just going to fire and get out. That way if I miss, I'm capable of, of escaping without being hit, but that didn't seem to miss. Now I'm just turning and getting out of there, and I'm going low, putting on the afterburner and just accelerating to put distance between the target area and myself. The entire mission has been flown hands-on without using the autopilot. It has a decent autopilot, but I, I like having hands-on on shorter missions. This has been a fun little mission, but now just sit back, enjoy the return home and the landing. Thanks for watching. I'm impressed if anybody is still watching this clip, but it has been fun flying this mission and it's one where you can land, rearm and take off again or switch to another aircraft. There are several different types available for this mission. I set up this one as a training tool for my son that actually is getting into DCS. Kinda nice for a 10 year old. On a final note regarding the AJS-37. The module is made by Heat Blur Simulations and it is very, very well made. Uh, they have a sense of detail, except for a few things on the skin. 
I noticed that the uh, warning labels on the uh, radar warning receivers on the leading edge of the wing, they suddenly changed their language, which is kind of fun. So Aktas became Sakta, uh, and I don't really want to uh, leave my wing behind. I, I usually tend to drag it along with me. Okay, time to land this thing. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the clip. Bye.